Hello and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to welcome you all to our AITS Tech Talk webinar. In today's session, my colleague Janine Kuta will be discussing or will be guiding us for the coming 30 minutes discussing the Cytex CADA workspace. So I wish you a valuable session and please be reminded to type any question you have during the session in the question box. And for sure, we'll be answering all your questions by the end of the session. Now I just uh, leave you in safe hands with my colleague Janine. Hi, Janine. Hi, Nader. Thank you. In today's webinar, we will cover workspace applied in Cytex SCADA 2018 R2 version. Today's agenda will first introduce the definition and the advantages of the use of workspace. Then the main architecture components are discussed, such, such as screen profile, workspace, and the master page, along with the paint's content. Finally, we will be demonstrating an example on how to embed those features. Workspace allows the management of the contextual content within each screen. It provides an efficient, fast way to auto-generate navigation menu with alarm counts. It enables the user to create multi-monitor profiles for each display client with different screen resolution. It contains an inbuilt context system that updates the faceplates and the information zone for each selected equipment. The first element to configure is the screen profile. It is defined as the arrangement of screens used by a Cytex SCADA display client with multiple monitors. It is defined in the Cytex Studio's setup activity. A screen profile can be applied using the screen setup page of the computer setup wizard. You can define a screen profile for each type of client workstation in your system independently. Inside the screen profile, we have the workspace, which is the engine that manages the contextual content changes. A startup context is set for each workspace by linking each screen to a level one menu, a level one item menu in the project menu named navigation. Here, area one is level one item, tab one is level two, page one and two are level three items. A startup context is set for each screen via the screen setup page of the computer setup wizard. The major component of the workspace is the master page, which provides the layout for the content that appears in the workspace. It differs from other graphic pages as it is made up of the panes that each hosts individual pages at one time. We have two types of resolutions, the high definition resolution and the ultra high definition resolution. To configure the master page, the computer setup wizard is used. As mentioned earlier, the master page contains different panes. We have five types of panes. The header, it includes page navigation buttons, trend alarm, alarm pages, the current page name, the login information, the current date and time, the, the shutdown button. The content pane, it displays pages you create to represent your plant or production facility. The navigation, navigation embeds the tabs, the buttons that can be used to switch between the content pages. Basically, it is a page associated with each piece of equipment. It contains a graphical representation of the equipment, such as measurements and controls. Finally, the info zone or the info pane, it contains the alarm list, the trends, and the interlocks. You have three types of interlocks, security interlocks, process interlocks, and permissive types of interlocks. Now let's go to our demo. In my demo, I have already created a project called webinar underscore workspace. It's my active project right now. I have configured some equipment. I will go to my system model, open the equipment editor, 
and show you I have already created a water pump equipment. Now of type drive. I will create a new equipment now. This equipment, I will call it water level that will detect my water level inside my tank. It will be of type meter. And I'll click on OK. I'll configure it. I'll choose it to be within my cluster one. The tag prefix will be water level. The IO device is internal. And this water level will be associated with a page called water tank that will be created later on. I'll click on OK now. I'll update my equipment, save all, click on OK, show the logs, everything's fine. I'll close my equipment editor for the time being. As you see, the equipment is already created and the corresponding variable, variables are listed here automatically. I'll go back to my equipment. Now, as you see, I have associated for my water pump a faceplate called Direct Online Drive. I will associate a new um, faceplate, but now for my water level. It's of type analog input, and this will show me the faceplate whenever I click on my water level during runtime. I'll click on Save. Okay, now everything is saved. Now I want to create a screen profile. To, to do that, I will go to the setup uh, activity. You will see here I have a screen profile. Let's create a new screen profile, call it screen profile one. This screen profile one, I want it to be of two screens because let's suppose we have two clients each, so, each showing, showing a different screen. I will, make, I will make it to be made up of two screens. You can see here, I can switch between uh, the resolutions for each type of screen here. Okay, so each type of screen can have a different resolution. For the time being, I will keep it this way. I will save my project. All right. Now I will create my pages. So the pages here, I will go, in order to create the pages, I go to the visualization um, activity. You see that in this project, we have predefined pages such as the faceplates already used because you know faceplate is a page itself. For example, the AI I used for the meter is right here. I will create my own pages. I will create two pages, one for my water pump and one for my mm, tank. So here, HD, I will choose the resolution, click on OK. Now I will paste a genie, a composite genie from my situational awareness library. For the pump, I will be using the drive, click on open. Let me just uh, share my full screen with you guys. Okay, so associated to water pump here. Let me change the uh, the label. I'll call it water pump. I want it to be of a large size and the display label to be below. Click on OK. Now let's create some navigation items. To do that, click on paste the genie, go to SA situational awareness underscore score navigation. I want to use a link underscore R, which will, which will then point to the right side. Now, how to configure the navigation? In the menu item, I will be putting the path of this item. The, the menu item will be of the form level one dot level two dot level three, et cetera. I will be doing that later on when I configure my navigation. So now, later on, you will see that my, uh, my level one item is my plant two dot water tank, because this will take me to water tank. I will put, a tooltip called water 
thanks. And I'll click on OK. I'll drag this and drop it here. I'll close this page and I'll save it. And I will call it water pump. This is my first page water pump. Click on OK. I will create a new page now called water tank. I will create it from my site at graphic builder. New page. Change the resolution. All right. Click on OK. I will put now my level and create my water tank. I'll change this, the radius to make it look better. I will paste the genie, the composite genie from my situational awareness library, which is of type meter. I will associate it now water level. Okay. I will keep the default uh, configurations and I'll click on OK. Let us also create a navigation item as done before. Now I use the left link. Same way, my plan two dot water pump because I want to go to water pump this time. Water pump. Click on OK. Drag and drop it here. Close it and let's save this page. I'll call it water tank page. So we are done configuring the pages. Very easy, very simple. Now let us go and uh, configure the navigation. To do that, we go to the visualization activity to the menu configuration. You see that we have predefined uh, menu configuration. I will do some changes, first of all, to my navigation here. I will call this plant one. Notice that plant one is level one, level one item. I will create a new navigation for my new screen. So I'll click on copy, I'll copy that and I'll paste it. All right, I'll rename it to this time plant two. And remember, this is, this is used in the navigation. I will call this my, uh, sorry, water, Pump, remove this, okay. The menu command, the navigation underscore uh, show target page, it is a function that will take me to the corresponding page. It is the psycho uh, function. So it's water pump, water pump, and I'll do the same for my water tank. Paste. Okay, so here water tank, and this will take me automatically to my water uh, tank page. I'll save my chain. I'll save the changes occurring. I will now run the project. Notice that um, when I run the project for the first time. The, um, there's a notification popping out telling me that I need to uh, set up my computer. So it will open automatically the computer setup wizard. I will do that quickly. I will be using uh, an express type of um, uh, configuration. Okay, it's opening now, just one sec. Okay, it's right there in the background. So click on next. Next, I want to configure the local settings. All right, here we go. So the screen profile, we already have two screen profiles configured. The default one and the one that I just configured right now. I want to choose this. I have two screens. I want to choose, choose the first screen one to be for my plant one, the second to be for my plant two. I'll change the start of page for both. I'll use the high definition and I click on next. My computer is a server and a client at the same time. So I'll keep those, uh, this configuration. It's a standalone, no networks. 
uh, no password configuration and I'll click on next and I'll finish and that's it. Now I will rerun the project to show you the, the runtime. Now it's loading, the runtime manager appears starting all the processes and all the servers, the trend alarm, the OI server, everything. I'll hide that for the time being. Now let's wait for my runtime uh, application to run. Okay, here we go. So as you see now, let me just minimize that for a minute. You have two screens. The first screen, it um, takes me to plant one. The second screen takes me to plant two. I'll be using plant two. You will see that I can here um, toggle between um, the pages already configured from the menu configuration. If I click on the water pump, it will take me automatically to the faceplate in the faceplate pane. And I'll, uh, uh, for example, go to my water tank, go back to my water pump. Uh, let us see the, the meter faceplate. It's already there. So basically, uh, that's it for my uh, try. But I will be showing you a really interesting example already embedded uh, inside uh, Cytex CADA. Uh, if you go to my project activity, you will see that there's a predefined example, situational awareness example for you uh, that would help you view those amazing features. Just click, make it active. Let me just direct you towards the configuration a little bit. I'll take you first to see the equipment model by, by clicking on the equipment editor. You can see here um, the model is composed of company and the company is composed of two sub equipment categories, which is the library and the top milk. The library, it contains some of the situational awareness uh, library. The top milk, it contains the, the process itself. For example, the milk supply, it has the skim milk tank and the full milk tank. Here you can see the, the bunch of equipments for each type of tank. All right, so that's it for the equipment. You can see that also for each equipment, I have configured a content, which is the faceplate for this uh, uh, equipment. Also, let us take a look uh, uh, on the interlock. To do that, instead of going to the model um, view, you go to the reference view. So now you are referencing uh, equipment to one another. So in a way that they are linked together, there's a certain interlock between those two. For example, pump four is the highlighted one right here. It, it has a process interlock with the, with the, with the tank, with the skim, uh, the skim milk tank. All right, so that's it uh, for the interlock. Let us take a look on the configured screen uh, profile. Here, uh, they already configured for us three screen profiles. One of them, it's called One Monitor. It, it has a 1920, um, 1080 resolution. The second one is uh, also a One Monitor. It has another type of resolution. We have also two monitors. It contains two screens with the same resolution. So that's it for the screen profile. Let us see how the navigation is configured now. Go back to my uh, visualization activity you see here <clears throat> that the menu configuration it shows all the navigation items for example the interlock zone it contains the safety permissive and process interlocks okay the, it's also lists the different levels uh for for the navigation for example level one is for my plant level two is for my ingredients finally before going to runtime, I'll be showing you the pages already configured here. Let us take a look on some of the pages. Let's go to my, let's say, default alarm page. Okay, this page will pop up later on in runtime here. So you can see the state, et cetera. This will be viewed later on during runtime. You can take a good look at that. I'll close it now. Let us see. Uh, the trend page. It, if you open, if you open it, you can see that there's an, a process analyst embedded. You can double-click on that to configure it. 
All right. Uh, finally, I'll close this one. Finally, let's see the themes, which is really interesting. You can, you can change the color of your theme. Let's now run it to check out those beautiful features. So run. So because it's the first time I'm gonna run, run my computer setup wizard. It's loading right now. Let me check if it's in the background. All right. Okay, so let us go through this quickly as done before. I'll keep just the default, um, the one monitor. I'll choose my plant, my level one, this type of startup page. All right, I'll click on next and let us run this again to check out what's going on during our uh, runtime. Now everything is loading up. Let me hide that. Let me just hide that also. Okay. So here we go. You can see here at the, uh, at the top, we have uh, the header bar, uh, which contains the, 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 the page we already opened that I showed you earlier. You can add, let's say, um, certain tags to your trends. For example, if I want to add, let's say, my uh, flow, flow PV for my, um, this one here, I can add it to my trend. I'll search for it. Oh, sorry. Okay. Let me just go back and choose that again to add it to my trend. All right. So here PV and I'll put it in my trend and I'll click on add and click on OK. You will see that it will be right here at the bottom. You can change the time and everything. At the left side, you see that my equipment hierarchy is there. And next to each equipment, you can see the equipment count. Not only that, it shows the counts for the different, the different priorities, different alarm priorities. You can also see the alarms here right here, listed so easily without no configuration, this can be done really, really easy. Let us now check the navigation um, pane. For example, the supply, which is made up of tank one and tank two, let us check our temperature sensor. Uh, the temp, whenever I click on the temperature sensor, it automatically jumps to the faceplate. The corresponding alarms will generate in the information zone along with the trend. Let us check out how interlock looks during runtime. We said earlier that there you can create interlocks and configure them. For example, pump four, it has a, 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 like a key here, a closed key because there's an interlock configured. If you go to permissive interlock, you will see that there's an interlock between the pump and the valve. So whenever the valve is closed, the pump will not open because it will be burned. So very easy, it's, you, you know, you can do it with, with minimum configuration, um, it's really um, helpful. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this webinar. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you so much, Janine, for this valuable session. So uh, as we have mentioned in the beginning of this session, we are waiting to receive the audience questions. Let's uh, give them a few minutes to type it. Again, just you can uh, type it in the question box. In the meanwhile, just want to remind you as well that you can always follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube, and you can find the links in the chat box. So we're waiting. Let's give a minute for the questions to start. Uh, we have actually received on a question uh, regarding the header and the navigation tree, how much we can customize them. Uh, Janine, can you help with this question, please? Um, yes, yeah, sure, sure. Um, I'll begin with the first part. It's about navigation. Sorry, about the header bar, right? Yes. So yes. the header bar, yes. The header bar, it's a page. Uh, let me go back to see if I can try to show you that. I will open my uh, graphic builder. I'll go file, open the corresponding page. Okay, so it is inside the SA include library. 
you will go to default header bar and you click on open, you will see that this is the page that will you can configure. For example, you can add your own buttons here. Uh, all right, you can, for example, uh, okay, I'm not gonna do the configuration. You can change the, uh, uh, you know, the, you can order those. Uh, yeah, it, it is changeable. Concerning the, uh, the second part about the navigation, Oh, I want to tell you something. The navigation, it resembles the, the equipment hierarchy already discussed from the equipment editor. Let me show you an example uh, of a page uh, that contains um, that contain the, the, this navigation tree and how you can change it. For example, the default alarm they have a place where the navigation is placed. If you double click on that, you will see that the data source of this, the tree view is my equipment model. For example, you viewed, you viewed earlier that you can see the alarm counts next to each equipment. You can make it to false because you, you, know, you don't wanna see it. You have also, you can customize the genie related to this uh, navigation tree by going to the corresponding project, which is the SA controls view item. So yeah, you can do some configurations on the navigation. I hope I answered the question. Perfectly. Thank you very much. Second, the question, uh, is there more detailed session about this? I believe I can answer this question. Yes, uh, regarding the SciTech workspace, we have uh, training dedicated for this topic. Uh, I will just post now the, the link in the chat box. Okay, so this is the training the training registration. You can just go and check our courses there. If you have an experience with the site, even with older version, you can uh, you can you can you can attend this uh, this course called uh, SciTech Workspace and uh, Workspace and Situational Awareness. It has a lot of more even information. You will go you will be going deeply with the information about the situational awareness and the workspace. And in case you don't have an experience with SciTech, you can at least attend the configuration uh, course before attending this one. So uh, I hope I answered as well this question well. Let's uh, give some time to the audience for more questions. Um, how to... There is one question from which version uh, this workspace we can find it in SciTech. Actually, this is uh, from 2018. From 2018 version, you can find the workspace uh, feature in SciTech version, in SciTech uh, schedule. Let's give one more minute, Janine, for the people. Uh, how to create user-defined data types in SciTech schedule? It's hard for me. Uh, I believe I will pass it to Janine to answer this one. Janine, the question is uh, how to create user-defined data, data types in SciTech SCADA. Uh, yeah, thank you, Nara, for the question. Uh, but what is meant uh, by uh, data types? Uh, what do we mean by user-defined data types? Let me check who wrote this question. Uh, just a second. It's from uh, Irvish if I'm spelling his name correctly. So if you can just uh, elaborate more a little bit, Urvish, uh, about this question, please. <clears throat> yeah, so. Uh, let's give one minute as well for the other people to answer or for Urvish to, uh, to elaborate about this question. There is a question, general question. Is it possible to, to get a recording for this one, for this webinar? Yeah, definitely. Uh, every time we are attending a webinar, after this webinar, you will be receiving uh, the recording that you can share it with, uh, with your colleagues if someone, if one of them has missed it. And at the same time, you can find it on our YouTube channel after a few days. 
Um, I think person. that I got what he meant. I don't know if uh, he meant something related to the variables. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you have different type of data types. Like you can have a digital, uh, long, real, string. Yeah, you know, yep. So I don't know if this is his answer. This is the answer for his question. It might be he didn't uh, give us more uh, details actually. Yeah. Uh, so let me jump to another question. Someone is asking, can I change in the default equipment uh, faceplate? Yes, uh, we can do that uh, by uh, going back to the original page, which is associated uh, with this uh, faceplate. For example, if you open, let's say, the, the water uh, level faceplate I used in this webinar, I can double click on this page and I can do whatever I want here. Let's say I want to delete this one. I don't want it to show. I'll go and delete. So yes. Predefined faceplates inside each project, they can be modified and easily. Great. Uh, yeah. Next question. Can I run Cytex SCADA on runtime mode while the PLC simulator is running? Uh, just a second. Is running on a network computer? Uh, you mean that the OI device is, uh, is on another computer? Is that what it you mean? It seems so. I yeah, well, so. yes, you can do that. Uh, you can choose network uh, uh, communication instead of standalone, and you will be able to do that. And uh, you can use uh, the internal, uh, you can use Psycode uh, or the internal uh, OI devices to run simulations. You can create your own events also to, to view the simulation. Yep, it can be done. Okay. Yes. Any more questions? Um, I think that's all for today. Anyway, if uh, if you if you'll be like sending us any more questions, for sure we'll become we'll come back to you and sending uh, sending you all the details and the answers. So I think that's all for today. I want to thank you, Janine, and thank everyone for attending and for the questions you have raised. Uh, we will be received. You will be receiving the webinar recording for sure, and you can share it with your team. We will virtually meet you again on the 3rd of September with a new webinar topic. So till that time, stay safe and have a nice weekend. Thank you, everyone.